Hi everybody and welcome back to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid and today we will talk about Notion versus Coda. It is always difficult to compare tools with each other because it really depends on what you need to use it for. And I showed you already in the past on this channel why I'm using ClickUp and Notion in combination. If you're one of my Inner Circle members, I teach the i framework in there. i stands for Input, Control, Output, Refine. And Notion for me is the part of control where I control my knowledge management. And in Output, I have ClickUp. So I manage the task inside ClickUp. And I showed you already in another video that I started to use Coda for my YouTube creation. And I already published an online course for my Inner Circle members where I show you in detail how you build up such work streams with rules, automations, filters, and all you need in Coda. I still was using Notion because I really like the databases in there, how I can manage accessibility to different pages. However, now I came to another limitation inside Notion that just showed me that Coda manages databases so much better than Notion. And I thought this is the perfect video to show you a simple use case that I wanted to apply in Notion and how much better Coda does it. What this is, we'll find out. All right, everybody, now let's dive into Notion and Coda here and I show you the use case. What I actually want to do is download all my videos from YouTube as a CSV file. So just as a simple list, not the actual videos, but the list. So I can set up a video database to easily get to my videos later on. I show you how I set this up in Notion so far. So here we have the databases I set up in Notion. You see that I'm actually using this and here we go. Until December 2020, I was doing the videos inside Notion. And what you see here is another database connected to my videos. So for this uh, video, for example, stop using Notion for everything. I added the thumbnail here manually. So this is actually the picture uploaded to this database. I added the video URL. And then we have the cross connection to the, to the software database. So this makes it now easy to filter by software. But I also can click on here and I see now all the videos related to the software here as well if you look here there are several and now i can go to to do this and here are the videos that i did about to do this i can click here i see the link to the to, to the to do this videos so this is how I use cross connection between databases. I think this is very powerful and I liked it. I liked it because then later on I was able to, you know, go to have the different views. I go to release view and then it showed me where the thumbnails were uploaded. It shows me this and it is some gaps in here, you know, things that I didn't publish maybe, things like that. This was very dated. So I thought, okay, let's go back to Notion and redo this video database again. I want to avoid manual interactions. I hate this. Just imagine I published already, I think another 50 or more videos since the last video here and going in there, creating the database for each video on its own, adding the thumbnail, adding the URL and all this is so much work that I thought, no, I'm not wasting my time. So I looked for a solution and the solution would be download the whole video list from YouTube that you can actually do, export it as a CSV file. And then you have a button down here, import, where you can actually pick CSV file and and a few other things. And this is already very limited when I look here what you can actually import. I was already surprised. But then I go to S uh, CSV and here we have the, the original CSV import. So if you pick this, it will upload this. It takes ages. And this is what we will have in the end. Okay, it just imported one block with all the information of the videos. Okay, it didn't recognize that this is actually a table that needs to be imported. No problem, we will do this again. So when you create a new page, you actually have an import button here as well. And I go to TCSV and I actually edited the CV. CSV file according to Notion's um, recommendations in order to import it as a table. And there we go. It created a table now and it imported it correctly. Let's see how this works in Coda. So here we are in Coda, the application that I use for my YouTube video creation work stream right now. And there I have the published videos and so on. And here I have the table um, with the videos. And 
Let's just start from scratch. So I have a new page here and all I do here is now just open up my finder. Let's just drag and drop the other CSV file in here. And it already asks me import CSV files into Coda. Should we do it here or do we have the header with some, some names for the columns already? So I import, it just takes a second and now it imported it properly. So I will just hide this. This is the top, uh, description and the keywords. See, it imported it perfectly without doing anything. Thing. No modification, nothing. Okay, but I will import now the same CSV file that I imported into Notion. So we have the same starting point. So now we have here information the same way as we have it in YouTube. I wanted to have a clickable link whenever I want to watch the video or actually share the URL of the video. This is not helpful, isn't it? That's the video idea. That's the video ID. When you go to YouTube and you watch any video up there, you see the URL and this is actually the video ID. See, B, X, T, C and so on. If you go here, you see, aha, uh -huh, B, X, T, C. So this is actually the video here. And this is called how to go paperless and become highly productive. And you see it was imported properly and it is also imported properly into YouTube. We have the ID here. So in order to make this clickable, we need to create a formula column. So what we will do, we will go here and we select formula. We name it video link. Now I can edit that formula here. So what we need in order to make this work, we go here to the watch page again and we need the front URL that we have here until this point and we copy it and we paste it in here and this is what we need. However, there is actually a formula called concat. This allows us to combine information. So this is actually text. So I have to put this in the parentheses and then combine it with the ID field in the beginning. So when I start writing ID, you see here that it recommends me the ID so I can click here, but it doesn't replace it. So I have to go here then and close. Oops, sorry. And done. All right, and there we go. Now we have the link, but this link, when I click there, it just opens up the formula. So all I can do is now copy it and paste it into the Chrome browser in order to open it. So I would go here, I paste it here, and then I can watch it, all right? Yeah, you can do this, but why should we do this if there's a better way? So I looked it up. I really saw it on Reddit, there are several people asking for things like that to convert this into a URL. And maybe you know the solution, then let me know in the comments below, or your Notion pros, but I didn't find anything. Let's see how this works in Coda. So here we go. We make a new column and we make this a text column. So you can actually choose any column that you like and then you can add a formula to this column. And this is already the big difference. In Notion, you have a formula column. Here you can, you have a date column or whatever you like, and you can apply a formula to this. And now when we write down here, concat, see, it shows me already, in my opinion, a much better explanation how to do this. And now let's just keep writing. We go in here and now we sh it shows me down here, text, text, paste in this beginning again. So we copy that, go in here, paste in. And we set this into a parentheses because it's text, then a comma, and it shows me already the result here. And now with the comma, it asks me here, recommends this. And when I want to use this, I simply have to press the tab key, done. It shows me the ID. It shows me that this column is selected. This is now part of the, of the formula. To me, this is a much better overview. So I enter and now there we go. But when I click here, you see, values in a column are calculated. I cannot change these. And this is not clickable. So we have the same state as we have in Notion right now. But wait, there's more. So we can always click here and go edit the formula, go into the front and start write down, writing down hyperlink. So we set this, the result here. So we set the result here into this hyperlink thing and done. Click, we have a hyperlink. So this is already the advantage. And you could say still, Tom, okay, this is a bit better and so on, maybe, or maybe you have a workaround. But before you click away, wait, what else I can do in Coda compared to Notion? In Coda, there's something called packs. And if you add the YouTube pack, for example, so here's the packs, or Slack or Intercom, and so many other things that you don't have in Notion actually to add, I can use YouTube video. And this, as I said, 
said before, you can apply formulas to the different columns. So we just simply click here and say add formula. And let's just copy paste this, okay? So we go here, we take this formula. So we have already a link and we apply this link into the pack thing. So you, it looks the same in the beginning, but on top you see it's syncing. So give it a few seconds until all this is synced. Dun, 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 dun. Now you see the difference. It replaced the URL with the title. And when I hover over this title, you get actually all the information of this video. I can even click here and watch the video inside Coda. No need to go to, to the other website and so on. And this is really the difference between a simple link that, that looks ugly or this one, which actually presents me the title. So this means I can actually hide this one. I can hide the ID. I can bring this to the front. I can even make this the main column. That's also something not possible inside Notion. But wait, there's more. I can now just add another column and I add the image, for example. So do you remember for, for Notion where I said I added all the thumbnails manually? Not only that I have to add this file manually, but I have a file that is lives on Notion and I have a file that lives on YouTube. If I change the thumbnail on YouTube, it won't get updated on Notion. If you do this actually in Coda, it pulls the information that we have on the YouTube video. So I can click here. I have the image there. I could save the image if I like. However, there's more. I can even get in the videos. All right, there we go. So I can just make this a bit bigger. And there we go. We have the videos here. And now tell me, isn't this awesome. It brings in all my videos that I ever created. One final word about Coda versus Notion. I don't know how far the progress of the Notion API is. I expected this to be released already. However, right now I can automate this. Whenever a new video is released on YouTube, I could add this automatically to my Coda table here. And this will pull in the information that you see right here. I can then click here the button and just watch the video inside Coda without going anywhere. And this is what I say is the power of databases to make them rich, to make them give them sense. So what I could do now, I can he go here as a final thing and I can say now detail, for example. And now I have a detail view, okay? So I have all the videos there. And if you click here, I get all the information related to this video pulled live from YouTube. Mind-blowing, isn't it? So if you think this was useful and you, if you want to learn more about Coda, there's a link in the description below where you actually can access my online course about Coda, where I show you exactly the work stream here on the side. Um, there's also a video I made about this on YouTube. And there's also a link to test Coda for free. You can go there and test it for free if you're not a Coda user yet. As I said, be careful. Obviously, it's not a 100% replacement of Notion. It is a specific use case here and it still has its limitations. So don't say, oh, this is so much better than Notion. No, I have several tools in my productivity system. And if you learn to want to learn more about what tools I actually use in my productivity setup, then I welcome you to join my inner circle. There you will learn all about my setup, why I use different tools for different purposes why I'm not a fan of an all-in-one solution. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and I'll catch you up next time.